everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Garmin and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and I will list some of the other things right here. I hope you're all doing well. I am very much looking forward to my two-week holiday, or is it vacation? I never know the correct English word. Um, I'll be off for two weeks. Um, I'll be home for most of the time, so I'm looking forward to some creative craftiness. <laughs> and also my new pattern coming next week, Wednesday, and you might already have spotted it right here. And I will do some editing magic to... Ba -ba 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 -bum. Ta -da! <laughs> I hope that worked. Um, this is my next step blanket, which is a new design that will be coming next week on Wednesday, July 21st. And the next step blanket is quite huge. It is uh, 190 centimeters square, uh, so 1.9 meters, and that is 75 inches square. Um, I had planned for it to be even bigger, uh, two by two meters, um, so that it would be a good size bedspread. So it is just a little bit smaller because otherwise we would not be able to make it with the yarn. I say we because I did not crochet this blanket. My tester uh, or my sample maker at least did. Uh, she did that a couple months ago and I am blown away by the result. I love, love, love it. I So I picked the colors, I wrote the pattern and handed it off to Lise and um, this is the blanket. Let me just stand up so you can get the full effect. I might have to move my chair out of the way, we will see. <laughs> Maybe if I just rotate it like that, yes. So it is... <laughs> It is quite big. Ta-da! How's the best way <laughs> to show this? <laughs> yes, I love it. I love, love, love it. We actually do use it as a bedspread. It's just uh, not hanging over the edges. Our bed is two by two meters and this is one, 190 by 190. But it's just really handy on these summer nights where some days you just want the empty bed sheet and some days you want a duvet inside of your bed sheet. And it's just quite a hassle um, to do that for, you know, every night. Um, so we just have the empty <laughs> bed sheets on our bed and then um, if it's a little bit cold we put this blanket on and if not we leave it on the chair and it's much easier this way so yes I'm all for a hassle-free life so this is what I'm using it for it's also a really nice throw blanket for on the couch um, or maybe outside it's just perfect for this season if you're um, having breakfast outside and it's just a little bit chilly or you're having dinner outside and it's a little bit chilly and you just take this blanket and it's big enough to cover two people and then you just sit there in your chairs all cozy with candles outside and just yeah these are my summer nights um, I'm a summer baby can you tell <laughs> So yes, what do I want to tell you about this blanket? It is made with Scapies Color Crafter. I've just, I have a small scrap of it left here that I was using to um, crochet this sample swatch. And I am planning to make a tutorial video, um, but that will have to wait until after my holiday. So I hope you understand that I do have some pictures in the, um, in the PDF and in the pattern as well. Um, and you know, any questions, just let me know. Um, the perfect place to ask pattern questions is my Facebook group, which is New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew, because in there it's just really easy for me to um, 
uh, to post a video to help with any questions and if any other people then have that same question I can just point them to the video and not have to explain the same thing over and over as it is with um, responding to emails so that is much easier for me um, and since there are other people in the Facebook group as well, chances are someone will answer it before me. And that's totally fine. I mean, that is actually really, really helpful. Um, so the pattern will be available July 21st, which is next week, Wednesday. Um, I have scheduled everything so that it goes up on that day and I can just continue to enjoy my holiday. Um, it will be on my website, which is newleafdesigns.nl, for free. So you will find the free full pattern right there in US English terms and in Dutch terms. And as I do for most of my patterns, that means that I will have one paragraph of English text and then the same text but in Dutch just below that. And I will uh, make the Dutch text just a tad grayer than the English text and I know it can get confusing especially if you have one of those browsers that immediately asks oh do you want to translate this page and then you have the same text twice and then the second paragraph being a little funny um, so just turn off your translator the English text is all there um, and if you want to have it like super clear, separate per language, you can buy the paid PDF version, which is also easy to print and add free. Um, and I've also made a UK English version, um, if you prefer that. I thought about adding the UK version to the website, but I thought three patterns would be overkill in there and might be less helpful <laughs> because uh, I often have to translate, well, translate um, US English to UK English and um, sometimes it gets so confusing because some of the terminology exists in both um, languages but then mean different things such as travel in UK meaning double crochet in US but treble in US meaning double treble in UK and it just gets very very muddled so I thought to just put the US version on my website as I've always just published US versions um, and the UK version will be included for the PDFs. So that is the next step blanket and I'm calling it the next step because um, I don't know if you can tell, but like the colors are climbing up the steps. It's more visible on this small swatch because you can see I started with the yellow here and then the dark blue and then the medium blue and it just goes diagonally. So it kind of goes up a staircase and so hence the name the next step blanket but also um, I figured that this would be a great next step for beginner crocheters who you know have already done maybe one or two projects and uh, this would be a great next project for them to kind of elevate their um, skills because this uses um, increases and then decreases you know constantly so it does require a bit of uh, attention which is also why it was so relaxing for me because it just occupies your mind so you can't think about anything else it it um, requires just enough brain power so that your mind can't wander to unpleasant places um, because yeah let's let's face it crochet is therapy for us right so this uh, is exceptionally therapeutic and uh, for beginner crocheters it might be even more you know it might require even more attention because you're constantly increasing and decreasing and so you're counting four four increases then four decreases four, 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 um, and yeah, you have a slight break when you have to climb up a step, 
um, yeah, but I just found it really, really enjoyable, and um, my sample maker said so as well. Uh, she had it finished in no time, and you know, she is a speedy crocheter, but this was exceptionally speedy. And it uses eight different colors and two balls per color, so 16 balls of Scapey's Color Crafter in total. Um, there are 100 gram balls, so that is 1.6 kilo in total for this blanket. Um, you could also go with 16 different colors or you could go with four different colors and then have four balls for each color, um, whatever you want. Um, but just know that if you want to make the blanket wider or longer or shorter or narrower, that you will need um, a different amount of yarn. So just keep that in mind. The pattern does include instructions for if you want to make it wider or longer um, so that, you know, if you have enough yarn, you can make a bed spread out of it. Um, you know, just adding one column of waves. Um, but that will require more yarn, obviously. So just keep that in mind. I have shop links for Scapey Scholar Crafter on my website, uh, also in the reveal post that is up right now. So if you're looking to shop for yarns online, I have some affiliate links on my website and then it doesn't cost you anything extra but if you purchase via that link then the shopkeeper will reward me with a small percentage and it's always very much appreciated it's uh it's not much but it's just a nice extra every couple months um so yeah thank you so much for those of you who decide to shop via an affiliate link. The pattern will be available in my Ravelry shop and also in my own New Leaf web shop, which is just on my website. And my own web shop is especially handy if you don't have PayPal because there are loads of other payment options that you can choose from. And if there's an update to the pattern, um, I'm able to send you an updated PDF via Ravelry, but also via my own web shop. So don't worry about any of that. Um, I do like that with Ravelry, you can then um, create your project page and upload your photos there. I can't do that yet with my own website. Um, yeah, but we also have a Facebook group and Instagram where you can share your photos with hashtag next step blanket. So please tag your photos if you do um, make this blanket because I always love to see it. And I think that is all that I want to share about the blanket. Uh, do let me know if you have any questions and if I see it before, uh, before I log off on Friday, then I will answer it right away. And otherwise I'll be back on August 2nd. I will first show you my knitting progress, which is also spinning related because they are my hand spun socks. Um, I don't know if I started these last time. I don't think so because I had done very little knitting to give my hands a bit of rest and I have almost completed the pair. So this is the first sock. So I had spun the yarn and then I had already divided it in two cakes of 50 grams each and this is the first cake completely used up. Um, and I had anticipated that I would run out sooner, otherwise I would not have done such a long <laughs> ribbing. But um, I don't mind, I mean, long ribbing is fine. It's just that now on the second sock, I will have to do this much ribbing as well. And uh, yeah, stockinette is just a little bit more <laughs> enjoyable. Um, so I knit this sock toe up with a German shorter heel, much like the simple toe up socks here on my YouTube channel. I uh, cast on eight stitches and then increase to 52. For my yellow hand spun socks, I uh, increased to 48. So that yarn was a little bit thicker than this one. 
And for the shorter heel, I did that over half of the stitch count as I usually do. And then I uh, did double stitches until I only had um, 10 stitches in between the double stitches. And then I picked up two stitches on either side here and then decreased those after about 10 centimeters and then did a lot of ribbing. So that is the first sock and the second sock. I've already completed the heel there. I've just picked up the two extra stitches on each side and um, yeah, just a little while before I decrease those. And then I move on to the ribbing. So yes, I am really, really enjoying this, but it's going really slowly because I'm just, you know, taking it slowly with my wrists. Um, yeah, but I'm just really enjoying how these are looking. I love the random uh, stripes of orange every now and again. And, oh right, I used Lori's Twisty Bind Off for, um, for the bind off here because that is very stretchy and it doesn't look very weird um, or it doesn't flare out, that's what I want to say because um, with Jeannie's surprisingly stretchy bind off um, you kind of get a flared look and your stitches are kind of slanted um, and with this one there is a kind of you do see it that it's different but um, at least it doesn't flare out and it stretches really nicely and it um, cinches back in when it's unstretched. So yes, I'm really happy with this bind off. I use this as well for my um, uh, Subtle Sock Collection, the ebook that I have out. And yeah, it was just, it's my new favorite bind off for ribbing. Um, so, and I hope to, well, you'll see me after a couple of weeks and uh, I hope to finish these socks by then. But um, yeah, I'm just really, really loving them. Um, I find that I'm wearing my other handspun socks a lot, so I can't wait to make more. <laughs> and I can't wait to wear these. Then for my other spinning project, so I showed you a swatch that I did um, last time. And this is Mohair and Shetland Wool. And it is, um, it was from a small Dutch mill called Wools of Holland. Um, and they had their own mohair and their own Shetland uh, wool as well. So I asked them to, um, to card 200 grams of Shetland wool and 100 grams of mohair together. Um, and the result was just not really, um, yeah, not really pleasant. It is quite itchy, uh, even though it looks really nice. Uh, it has a nice check texture, but uh, it was just too itchy. So I wanted to um, blend it with some other fibers. And I have two swatches here. So the blending, I, in my previous podcast episode, I was telling you that, um, let me just get the fibers. So here's the mohair and Shetland wool. Um, and I wanted to blend that with some other fibers and I have blended it with um, camel fiber. Actually, this is camel and merino that I got in a fiber share package. And this is much, much softer. Um, and I blended those and I'll just put them back. I have to cut that out because it's very crinkly each time. Um, and last time I was telling you that I did not think I would uh, need carding combs, but um, 
I did. So um, I bought animal fur combs um, because I looked online for carding combs and they're like 90 euros for a set which is very expensive. Uh, it's like over a hundred dollars and maybe like 70 or 80 pounds. So very expensive. And one of my viewers, Alita, uh, told me that I could use animal fur combs as well. And uh, we just have a really tiny one <laughs> for Momo because uh, she doesn't shed a lot. Um, so I went out and bought these. They only had one for dogs and one for cats. Um, so yeah, I completely emptied their store of these combs, but together they were like 14 or 15 euros, which is a much better price. So I just put a bit of mohair on the brush, then a bit of the other fiber that I'm going to blend it with, then mohair again, then the other fiber, and then I just comb. <laughs> And um, I'll show you in a bit, I think, with some other fiber. Um, and at first I had a little bit of merino, so I blended the mohair with some white merino and got quite a nice um, result. I wasn't able to spin as finely as I wanted, but um, yeah, I mean... That's fine. Um, but I did not have uh, enough merino to, you know, blend that with the other um, 275 <laughs> grams, <laughs> which is quite a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. Um, because, you know, if I'm going to be blending it, then I need 300 grams of another fiber as well, which then will make 600 grams. Um, yes. I don't have enough of anything, but so I have also blended um, the mohair and Shetland with some camel, which is why this is a little bit more brown, a little bit sandy colored. And since I have the most of camel, I think I have just over 100 grams. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with this and spin up a whole bobbin first um, and then do a second bobbin and see how far I can get. So uh, this is what the fiber looks like unspun. So this is the mohair and camel and the mohair is a little bit longer than the camel so on the outside you will only see the mohair. So in some places, you know, I will only pull out the mohair, but that is fine. That is fine because I'm also plying it with the same yarn again. So chances are that if I have mohair in one place that for the other ply, there will be camel and mohair going around that. Um, so yeah, it's it's looking really, really fluffy. Um, and I've already spun half of a bobbin and I will put in some footage of that uh, right here because I don't want to take the bobbin off the spinning wheel and um, it's easier to just film the bobbin instead of bring the bobbin up to the camera. Um, I will say that it is a very slow spinning process because I spin faster than I comb these things. So um, I just comb a little bit of fiber until I get bored um, because it is not a very um, interesting um, uh, job. Uh, so, so I just comb fiber until I get bored of it and then I spin it and yeah, the combing takes me so much longer than the spinning, but, um, oh well. Um, yeah, so it is going slow, but it is much better than the fiber I had before. Um, so yeah, it's just an interesting process. Um, and similarly, I'm doing this with another um, spinning project as well. So I'll just put my swatches away and I hope to show you more next time. 
But uh, since I got these combs, I was also thinking to use some of my scrap yarns that I have here. So you might have seen this before. Um, this is a little swatch I put in there as well. Um, so all of my wool and merino scraps from the past couple months are in here. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of scraps and at, at first I started saving them because I wanted to show like look how many ends I wove in. It's insane. But then as I started saving them I thought it's kind of a waste to throw this away. So uh, yes, of course I wanted to do something with it. Um, and I have carded them and <laughs> I am saving them in, in this little plant pot because it makes them look like a troll. Do you remember those trolls with like fluffy hair? Uh, my mom had a lot of those and um, yeah, she was always very precious of them. She wouldn't really let me play with them. But uh, yeah, this reminds me of those. So um, let me just take out his hair and show you. So I found that um, when I just grabbed a bunch of scraps and blended them together, uh, it would it would get kind of, well, there's a lot of purple in here and this is not fully blended yet, but it would get very gray. It would look very dusty um, because I'm blending all of the colors together. So what I then did was that I um, put, <laughs> put colors together that, you know, I, I categorized them. A lot of work I know a lot of work and all of the um, sock yarns and other plied yarns I split them into their single plies before putting it in the pile because um, yeah if, if you still have plied yarn in there before carding or while carding it's really difficult and you know you get this uh, what I showed you before where you get this huge knot um, and you can feel it as well as like yeah it's a knot of plied yarn um, yeah it's it's just really difficult to comb that out um, so uh, I have <laughs> categorized them by color and then uh, teased all of the plied yarns so that they would be single ply and then this is what I got. So it's not as smooth as the um, other spinning fiber because some fibers I'm just not able to comb out completely but it looks really really good especially this one because it has a lot of different um, shades in there and I can't wait to spin with this um, here you can see there is still a bit or oh, I, I don't know if you can see that uh, but there is still a bit of plied yarn in there um, there's a bit of orange in here as well. And then this yellow bit. I also blended this with some browns and some white. And I think it looks really good. So yeah, I'm still debating on how to spin these. If I want to spin one color until it's gone, or if I want to spin one bit of this, then one bit of this, and then you kind of just uh, alternate them. I think I'm going to do that because I think that will look best in a uh, finished yarn if you kind of uh, distribute them. Um, but doesn't this look fun? I mean, 
I can't wait to um, juice bin with this. Let's put it back. <laughs> so, um, so I thought that I would show you how I do that. So this is, um, all of the plies are teased apart. Uh, oh, not all of them. But, um, so I kind of just go over the comb like this. like that and it's easiest if you only do a little bit at a time and then <laughs> see now I've combed it all onto this one and then I just repeat And then after I do that a few more times, I then take it off and I take it by the top and this is all combed out nicely and you see that on the bottom it's very lumpy. So and then I just comb out the bottom and then that will leave me with a bit of fiber that is then nicely prepped. I mean. I will have to do it a couple more times, but at the end, I will just take it off and then make sure that there are no lumps on the bottom. And then I will place that and then I will repeat that with another bit. And then, yeah, it's a lengthy process, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not spinning yarn because it's fast. I mean, I could just buy yarn. Um, so that's not why I'm doing this. I just, yeah, it's, it's another way to express my creativity, I guess. And, um, yeah, it's a nice, it, I mean, I will say it's a nice process, especially with these little colored bits. It gets a little bit tedious with the, uh, mohair and camel because it's, always the same but I will say that this goes by quicker because both of the fibers I want to blend are already carded and this takes a long time um, yes but you know every every little project has its has its merits has its good points and it's slightly tedious bits so um, I mean stockinette and then ribbing right there's always a um a pro and a con to a project and that is actually all that i have been working on for the past two weeks um i've been doing a lot of prep work on my website so that everything is nice and in order for when i go on my two-week vacation and i'm and yeah i'm just planning a lot of content for the next two weeks um not sure if i will be able to actually schedule everything that I have planned but um, yeah so I will also be planning my designer talk video for my patreon page next week so uh, if you don't know I'm podcasting every two weeks and then in the weeks that I'm not podcasting I'm uploading a designer talk video to my patreon page uh, for uh, elder tier supporters um, last week's designer talk was about um, running a business while also taking care of your mental health. And next week, uh, next week's episode is going to be about selling platforms. So, um, whether you sell patterns or yarn or bags, you know, is Etsy a good idea? Is Lovecrafts a good idea? Craftsy, Ravelry, your own web shop? You know, I kind of want to, um, uh, after having a more theoretical, um, topic I kind of want to have a more practical topic as well something that you can actually um, 
perhaps take away something that you can use right away. Um, yeah, and I'm, I've been getting a lot of nice feedback about that, so that is always really, really nice. If you want to read more about my Patreon page, I'll put the link right down below. And I also have a colorwork course right now, which is also available on my Patreon page. But if you don't like a subscription type thing, recurring payment, uh, then you can also now purchase this Colorwork Masterclass as a one-off payment on my Thinkific website. So I will post that down below as well. It is a um, course consisting of, I think, seven chapters? Yes, I think. Seven, uh, and it includes a lot of charts. It includes a hat pattern as well, um, and I will take you through all of the beginner stuff and then the more experienced stuff of color work knitting. So stranded color work. Um, so you need to know how to knit, but you don't need to have any experience with color work knitting. I will take you through all of that. I was very excited to uh, launch that course and I hope to be launching more, you know, standalone courses like that. Um, yeah, and I've been getting some really nice feedback, so that is always really good to hear. And then lastly, I want to show you something that is not fiber related at all. But uh, last weekend we had a little um, family get together um, at my grandpa's house and we found these very old photo albums. And my grandparents, they had one photo album for each of their grandchildren. And <laughs> I found a photo of my brother and me. And I think in this photo that you will be able to recognize me. So. I don't know if you like it, but I really enjoyed looking through these. So <laughs> here's here's me with my brother. Um, yeah, very, very retro. He's trying to be badass with this cap here and he has this little bike. I'm on a kind of toy car as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I just really, really enjoy looking through these old photos. And that was, uh, it was just nice taking a trip down memory lane. I was there with my cousin, um, and we were going through the old, um, uh, game closet. So we have a lot of board games in there, and each board game was, like, unlocking another memory, like, oh, do you remember this? And yeah, it was just really, really nice. So I thought to share that bit with you because <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I will be signing off now and I will be editing this podcast and hopefully getting it up today. Um, I hope you all have a great two weeks. So I will be back in three weeks with another podcast episode. Um, so I will see you all then. I hope you have a great time. I hope you enjoyed this video and